What do Diddy, Bill Cosby, and Trump all have in common? Before I answer that question, I have to address, I'm actually scared to talk about it. Who I care about are the people who support the work of treasures. I am not naive to the fact that many of the people who care about anti-trafficking and have the means to support victim services are the very same people who will be casting votes for Trump in the upcoming election. So I am scared, but fear is part of the problem. Fear is what keeps people silent. Fear is what keeps victims silent. And I did not leave my pimp and start the work of treasures because I plan to stay silent. So we need to talk about it. The sad, sad and hard truth is the issue of sexual violence is an epidemic in our country where one in three women and one in six men have been sexually assaulted in their lifetime. So we have to talk about it. So that brings me back to the question, what do Diddy, Bill Cosby and Trump all have in common? Their victims all filed suits against them under the Adult Survivors Act in New York just before it expired. For a very, very brief window of, of time, for one year only, there was a period of time when people in New York could file suits against the people who had assaulted them beyond the statute of limitations. This was a huge deal. And because of this, many people came forward. And as a result, some of the world's most powerful men are finally facing justice. So once again, a powerful, wealthy man is in the headlines. Sean Diddy Combs was arrested on September 16th for trafficking and racketeering. The world looks on in shock and horror as they hear all of the allegations. And what I will tell you is the women of treasures are not shocked about what he did. What we are shocked about is that he is actually going to face consequences for his actions because what he did is actually something we see every single day. Those of us that have walked out of exploitation and trafficking in the commercial sex industry. And the very, very hard truth is, is most of us survivors will never see justice for our perpetrators. There are a lot of reasons for this. Number one, the time limitations that we just discussed that create barriers for people being able to report. Number two, the astronomical cost of litigating. And number three, the price for justice for survivors is often just too high. Because what a lot of survivors have to look forward to if they do come out is horrible attacks and slander and degradation. A dear friend of mine said this about her experience with the legal system. The process of coming forward is an emotional assault that strips you bare and leaves you violated all over again only this time by the system that is designed to protect and defend. It has left me to conclude that there is no justice and there is often no real protection available for women. We have to exploit the stories of our sexual trauma like salacious headlines in hopes that anyone will believe us. And if you don't believe that to be true, we can just look at the statements that are being made by Diddy and his representatives about the women who have come forward. And I'm gonna read a few of them for you. Number one, these are statements that Diddy himself has made about the people who have come forward. The claims are sickening. My accusers are looking for a quick payday. The allegations are lewd and meritless. He says, I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Statements made by Diddy's lawyers and reps are these. This is about the allegations and accusations. They are reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction, made up, not credible. This is purely a money grab and nothing more. Because of Mr. Combs fame and success, he is an easy target for accusers who will attempt to smear him. This lawsuit is an attempt to rewrite history, false claims, all in the hope of trying to get a payday. The accusations they say are baseless and sickening. I invite you to take a few deep breaths after reading that. That is the kind of victim blaming that people can expect when they finally do speak out and seek justice. And really what this is, is classic DARVO. DARVO is an acronym for a tactic that is well known that narcissists use in order to gaslight people. And it stands for deny, accuse, 
reverse victim and offender. So what's happening here with the statements that are being made, they deny what happened, they turn around and they attack the person coming forward with the allegations, and then they reverse the victim and offender role such that they make the perpetrator of sexual assault actually look like the victim in the situation. This kind of emotional abuse is painful and destabilizing. And when it's coming from someone who has the real or perceived power to actually wage war against you using the legal system, it is debilitating. Can you even imagine the bravery and fortitude that it takes for a person to stand up to all of this and seek justice? What survivors have to go through in order to see justice is nothing short of barbaric. So this is what survivors can expect to hear when they finally muster up the strength to come forward. They can expect to hear an onslaught of attacks and character assassinations designed to bully, intimidate, threaten them, and ultimately silence them. That's what they hear, but what they need to hear is we believe you. You know what you know and you feel what you feel and you are not alone. We need to be believed, but we also need time. In so many instances, survivors are actually prevented from seeking justice, but because by the time they're ready to do this, too much time has passed. And because of the Adult Survivors Act in New York, for a brief window of time, for a brief window of time, that barrier was lifted and look at what happened. Look at the kind of justice we are beginning to see. We need time. We need time to seek justice, not when the legal system thinks we should be ready, but when we are ready. Because the truth is, most of us don't run straight to therapy after we experience sexual trauma. A lot of us, try to valiantly move on with our lives and put the past behind us and only to find one day it resurfaces. Others of us just really need a lot of time to sift through and sort through and drudge through the complexities of, of the healing process after experiencing this kind of trauma. We need time because time does not heal all wounds, but it takes time to engage in the healing process. And we also need support. We need the support and resources to equip and empower us to seek justice if and when we are ready. That's why we at Treasures provide support groups and mentoring because we know that people need time and they need support because no one should have to face the aftermath of sexual violence alone. And thankfully, no one has to.